In this video, we're going to look at how we can use a variable in a Forms Pro survey and pass the variable through the URL of the survey so that we can actually populate information that's unique about each one. So let's have a look at a, a specific scenario to explain. So what we're going to do is, let's say we've got an event that's going on. That event, we want to capture feedback from the different attendees and they're each going to different sessions. So rather than having one survey for each individual session, we're going to have one survey for the entire event, but we're going to be able to pass the session ID through when we share that URL with the attendees. That way, when everybody's giving their feedback, all of the feedback will come into the same survey so we can analyze it and we'll be able to see which session it was that they attended. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is if we come up here to the survey variables, we've just added one, oh, let's go back, we just added one called session ID and the default we've just put unknown. So we're just putting session ID and default unknown. Now the next thing that we want to do is because what we're going to need to do is when somebody fills out the survey, we won't be asking them for the session ID, but we want to be able to capture it. So when we export our results into Excel or we're looking at that in the common data service, we can actually see what the session ID was. So we're going to add a question and we are going to make sure that that question is not visible. So this is by default and we're just going to unselect that so that is basically a hidden question. So if we're looking at this, we don't see that question. All right, so we've got our question. You can call that whatever you want, but make it something fairly simple and easy to remember because we're going to use that later on in a flow. The next thing, and you don't have to do this, but um, if you wanted to, you could then also display that session ID. I've put it in red and bold just so when we're looking at the survey, it'll be very obvious where that is. But we're basically asking them to rate the following session and then whatever that session ID is. Then you carry on and fill out and put the rest of the questions for your survey. All right, so now let's look and see what we need to do. So that is the survey URL. So when we go to send our survey and we get the link, that's the link that we've got. Now what we can do is we can actually append to the end of that link and we can put the following code. So we can put an ampersand and then CTX equals. And then what we're doing is we're essentially setting that variable of session ID. And then what we're doing is we're setting what the value is that we want to be populated into that specific variable. So here's um, a, another example where we could actually do multiple variables. So we can have variable one and then what the value is we want to use for variable one. Then we can have variable two and the value we want to use for um, variable two. So if we take this full URL we can then paste it in here. You can see it will actually add in, if you've got spaces, that's fine. It will add in a percentage 20. It'll just put in some additional things into that, but that's fine. What we can see is when we go to this URL, it's going to populate with that specific session ID that we've added to the end of the URL. So this is fantastic. We can send out a URL that is for an anonymous survey capture, but yet we can still capture information so we could share that URL in for 20 different sessions for an event and it's just the same survey but we're able to pull and display that information so we've got it a little bit customized so we're asking someone to rate the following session so we just go ahead and fill this out um, and then we'll go ahead and submit it now what we have in order to be able to then pull that session ID, at the minute we've just displayed the session ID, we want to be able to pull that session ID back and actually populate that hidden question so that when we go and export the responses, we can see that question populated. So let's look at our flow. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to have a trigger condition and that is basically the creation of a Forms Pro survey response. So next step we've got is a pass JSON step. So what we're doing is we're using the context data and then we are basically populating the schema and we're using the, um, the context data from one of our survey responses. So fill it out first time and then go ahead and, and grab that information. I'll put a link to a blog post where it shows how you can do that if you haven't done that in any of your steps before. 
Then what we're going to do is we need to find the question that is linked to the survey that we added and we hid. So we've got that session ID question that is linked to the survey, never mind the responses or anything, it's linked to the survey. So what we want to do is we actually want to get that record of that specific question called ses session ID. So we've got an expression here, um, or basically a filter query, where we are looking for the survey question where the question text equals session ID or whatever you called that question on your survey. And then the source survey identifier equals the source survey identifier from the from the top trigger. So that's the um, the question that is linked to that specific survey. OK, so once we've got that question, we then want to actually be able to go ahead and create a question response for that question because because it was hidden we didn't get a response so what we're able to do is actually create that response using flow so what we're going to do is we are going to create a um, survey question response record and we're going to populate some of the fields here so we need to use that session id that we got from the past json step so if I scroll down a little bit, we'll be able to see here, here are the items that have come from past JSON. So these are all of the variables. First name and last name are set by default and you can't remove them, so they will always come through. But that session ID is the one that we created. And we're going to populate that in the name, key phrases and the response fields. If we scroll down, we then are going to do an expression and we're going to basically get that source question identifier. And that is basically getting that record that came back in our list record step. And we're getting that um, and pulling the source question identifier. So from this step, that's what we're getting. Then we're going to populate the um, source response identifier and the source survey identifier from the trigger step. Um, we're going to use the status reason value of active and we're going to set the same owner as the owner on the trigger step. So the same owner as the survey or the survey response rather. Then what we're going to do is we are going to um, set the question. And again, that's basically using the um, record that came back from the list record step. So the record that came back from this. And then finally, the survey response that we want to link it to, we use the activity field from the trigger, from the initial um, uh, survey response that was received. So once we've gone through all of those, that's basically going to create a response for the um, session ID question. Now, if we go back into Forms Pro and we look back onto this survey, we look at the responses and we go into all of the responses and we've got the option to export those responses. So let's go ahead and export them and we'll just download and we'll go ahead and open that file. So what we're going to see is along with the questions that were responded to directly by the respondent, we'll also have, if we just pull this over, we basically have um, there we go. There we have our session ID that has been populated. So we can see there that we've got different session IDs. So for each session, all you'll need to do is just append the variable of the session ID and then actually put the value of what that specific session was. And just make sure that each presenter or whoever's sending those links out is putting those variables on the end. And then you'll be able to capture that information when you export your results. So hopefully you found this useful. I can see lots of um, reasons for using this. Really, it's very straightforward, very, very simple. Again, just a reminder, it's appending to the end of your URL and just setting what the variable is you want to populate and then what the value is that you want to populate into that variable. So hopefully you found it useful. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.